Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cree with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor and sometimes gouache. And this project is the gingerbread house. This is part of our holiday gouache box, so I'm super excited to do this. Um, we are going to be doing this project in five steps. Oh, also we have Keenan here. Oh yes, I'm here. Thank you for joining. Keenan, thank you for being here thank today. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, oh, also, I don't... I'm going to put my I Voted sticker on my apron. Oh, nice. I voted today. Did you vote today? I did. That's oh. why I got my sticker. Glad you have a sticker to Did tell you us. even vote if you don't have a sticker? You know what I mean? I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Just want to put that. You vote, do you guys. That for meals. It's too late. This tutorial is going to be released after <laughs> the voting day. It's entirely but too late. I just, next, next time, if you didn't make it, vote. Okay. <laughs> so, in five steps, we will be doing this project. Our very first step, we're going to be putting in our background. Our second step, we are going to be painting our house. Our third step, we will be doing our gingerbread house details. So our candy canes, our door, our snow, you know, all that fun stuff. Our fourth step, we'll be putting in the little snow drops and little cute little gumdrop fence. And last step is just details. So any last minute finishing touches you wanna do on your house. We are using five colors for this project and I'm actually just gonna put the tubes out. Um, so we are using Permanent white, Holbein gouache, designer gouache. We are using turquoise blue. We are using carmine. We are using ivory black. And we are using permanent yellow deep. I wonder if that's better than the swatches. I'm not sure, I like I it. I don't know, okay, we'll see. I'm using three paint brushes actually for this tutorial. So our standard round six, round two, our go-to brushes. This is the Let's Make Art Classic series, um, my favorite brushes. And then I'm also using a wash, three quarter inch wash. You can use one inch, you can use whatever size that you have. This is the Brin Princeton Heritage series, but any size wash, any brand would work just fine. It's just because we're putting in a background and it's just easier to um, fill a lot of space faster with lot larger brushes. Okay, so let's get started, you guys. Oh, we gotta do our oath. Oh, yes. If you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. Okay, I started by taping the edges off on my paper using painter's tape. You guys um, don't have to do that, but I wanted a clean edge. Um, and I'm gonna start with my wash. I'm gonna get it wet, and I'm gonna mix this kind of like peachy color. So I'm gonna grab a tiny bit of carmine and a tiny bit of yellow. Just a tiny, tiny bit. And then a bunch of white. And you want to have hopefully a good amount mixed that you could do the background. Now, depending on how pink you want it, you'll add more red. If you want it more like peachy orange, you're gonna add more yellow. If you want it darker, you're gonna have less white. Okay? Okay. So those are just, so I guess, I'm trying to like think about maybe doing like two parts white, one part whatever, one part whatever. I don't know if I'm strong enough on uh, dividing mm. fractions, ratios to do oh, that. Oh yeah, no, no. Nope. So maybe I just won't say that. But I'll think about it. I'll, I'll see if I can do it in the future. Just throw some random numbers in there for fun. <laughs> Three parts, red. No, don't. Don't <laughs> listen to me. Okay. So I have my color here and then I'm just going to mix a good amount to make sure that I have enough to do all of my background. So I'm just gonna keep on mixing. Now, if you accidentally put too much color in there and you want it to be lighter, you can always add more white paint. You can always add more. Okay, that feels pretty good. All right, and now I'm just gonna take my wash and go back and forth. Now you can use some water to thin it out, but remember gouache um, 
is an opaque watercolor, which means that if you have too much water, it's going to start looking transparent, um, which isn't bad. It just depends on what look you're going for. See how transparent this layer is compared to that? Yes. So I want it all to feel pretty opaque. So I'm going to use most, I'm going to use the water just as a way to make it easy to spread, not as a way to make it more transparent. And I'm only going to paint about two thirds of my paper. The bottom third of this is just the white paper. Mm. I know. That's why I like painting wintry snow scenes on watercolor paper, because <laughs> it's like, I don't have to paint it white. And the other thing I did is I kind of left, I did kind of like a curve. You could do a straight line if you want. And then I let some of the edge be rough, that rough kind of texture. I just like it. You see how it's not a smooth line? Yes. I really like that. So I did that on purpose. Now that's up to you. That's a stylistic preference. You can do it. You cannot do it. So there's, I like it. Yeah, there's step one. There's our, there's our background. And I just love this rough kind of kind of fuzzy um, texture and that's step one and we're gonna let that dry and while that is drying we're gonna mix the color of our gingerbread house okay so our gingerbread house is a brown um, and brown is essentially dark orange now I just want to say that we don't have an outline for this project so you can make your gingerbread house any shape that you want. I decided to go with a really long narrow roof line because I thought it gave it a whimsy look but you can do a standard house, you can totally change it. Maybe you want to do like an actual gingerbread man next to it or a little gingerbread family or a yes. little gingerbread dog. Or a stick man. A stick man. Sky's the limit. But anyways. <laughs> Focus. You can um, take a bite out of the house. Oh my gosh. That would be amazing. That is hilarious. <laughs> Kanan. Thank you. Thank you for I'll your contribution. Here. I'll be here all week. <laughs> okay, so we're going to make brown. So I'm going to need more white. So I'm going to put some more white here on my palette. Okay, so I'm going to mix orange by getting carmine, getting yellow. So that's a pretty vibrant orange. I'm gonna darken it by adding black, just a little bit of black. And that's gonna give it like a brown color. See how it's turning brown? Oh, wow. Now, I want this to be kind of like a tan, like a khaki color. Khaki? Khaki. So that's where the white comes in. By adding white, it's gonna lighten that brown up. And then if you want it to feel, if you want like more, more of a warm brown, cause this is kind of just making a light brown. You see how it's, it's getting lighter in value, but not richer in color. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, you can add a little bit of yellow in there if you want to warm it up, yellow or red. So a warm color. A warm color. Okay, now I have my brown and my background is dry enough that I can just paint right on top of this. This is the joy of gouache, my friends. I didn't have to paint around the house. I'm just going to paint over it. We can layer. Also, I would love to point out, and if you have the step-by-steps, you would see this. The first design I did on the house, I didn't like it. So I let it dry and I painted brown over it again and I redid the design on the house. Hmm. And you can see that in the step-by-step -step where the, the roof line detail was different. It's uh, different between step four and five. And that's I, fun. I mentioned that in there where I'm like, you'll notice that that's different. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like it, so I changed it. And with gouache, it's really easy to do that. You just layer right on top of it, and it's not a big deal. Okay, so I'm going to start. I'm going to still use my wash for this. And I'm going to um, kind of like mentally picture where things will go. Now, when I'm 
when I'm drawing and I don't sketch things out, sometimes I'll just like get my mind used to what I'm going to do by mimicking my brush strokes above my paper without making brush strokes. So I'm like, okay, I want my roof line to kind of stop an inch before the top, go back down and then kind of angle in. So I just kind of mentally place it. And I know this feels really silly, but it's helpful. So I'm gonna start with my roof line here. And sometimes I'll just use like the edge of my brush this way to put in the shapes, okay? So I'm making a triangle. And it's always better to start a little bit more narrow because you can always widen. And then I'm gonna do angle in for the bottom of the house. Okay, and then I see how that feels. I feel like I can go a little bit wider. So I'm just gonna move it up. Mm. Still kind of using the edge of my brush. The trickiest thing is trying to have your angles match, like mirror each other. But the wonderful thing about this project is that it's a gingerbread house. So it can be whimsy, it can be a wonky house, it doesn't have to be even. You know, think of a, think of the Weasley house on Harry Potter, you know what I mean? Yes. You can do whatever you want. I don't think I've ever made a gingerbread house. Like baked one baked or decorated one. one? Or either all of the You've never decorated a gingerbread house? I don't think so. So my family, I have a large family, and um, every year we would go to our aunt's house, Aunt Ardina. She wasn't actually my aunt, but everybody called her Aunt Ardina. That was like her title. Awesome. And um, they would do a ton, like, I don't even know who did this. That's sad. But like someone <laughs> would put together a ton of gingerbread houses, like pre-make them with graham crackers and frosting and all of that stuff. And we would have these huge gingerbread house decorating parties where there would be like 50 different types of candy. That might be an exaggeration, but a lot of different types of candy. <laughs> and um, we would just sit and decorate them for hours, like every year. It was amazing what people came up with and was a lot of fun. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. And edible, right? Oh yeah. That's the best kind. Okay, my roof line is totally crooked, so I'm going to widen this. Who did this. you hire for this job? <laughs> They're like, Sarah, who actually painted this one? Because it clearly <laughs> wasn't you. <laughs> I was just talking about the roof line, but then you made a joke about the painting. So never mind. <laughs> made it real. I'm actually going to leave. I'm going to leave it. I kind of like that it's like wonky, but um, I want to make this just a little bit more narrow. I just love this little weird house. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna call that good. Oh, I need to put in my chimney. So just kind of off the side. Now the wash is also really good for doing like um, straight edges, right? And then a little lip here. <laughs> so cute. I don't know why it reminds me of a like gnome hat. Oh yeah. That's what I'm seeing. Um, it just looks like a gnome with a, it's a gnome silhouette with a pipe sticking out of his mouth. <laughs> it's, it totally does. Okay. So we're going to let that dry. Now, um, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white and what I want to do is put in a white door. And the reason for that is I want the red to be really vibrant against this brown. And I feel like if I were to just paint red on top of it, it might be bright. But if I definitely paint red on top of white, it will be a more vibrant red. Mm. That also, just a little tip for you guys, is why you want your palettes to be white underneath to give you an accurate representation of what the color will look like on the white surface you're painting. So, um, or vice versa, like if you want to paint on wood or paint on a surface that is not white, have try and have your palette match 
whatever surface you're painting on, I mean, similarly enough, so you have a good idea of actually what your colors will look like. So I'm just going to paint right on top of this, my little curved door. Now this is pretty wet, that's why that brown is smearing. So if you wanna let this dry a little bit before you do it, you can. I just am impatient sometimes, so I'll just go for it. And I did that using my round six. Okay, now how about, I know that we were gonna do the um, snow and gum drops in step four, but while we're waiting for our brown to dry, we could totally put in little drops of snow. Cool. I like to do things instead of just sitting and waiting because I get distracted easily. <laughs> I'll just go off, I'll go to make a snack and then like three hours later, after watching like four episodes of Gilmore Girls, I'm like, oh yeah, I was painting a picture. <laughs> what season of Gilmore Girls is your favorite? I don't know, I, I've only watched Gilmore Girls all the way through once. Same. And I'm re-watching it again right now. I think season one's my favorite, just because the first season of every show is always my favorite. Yeah. Okay. Especially if I watched it when I was in my youth. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm using my two, and I'm just picking up the white, and I'm just gonna start with dots. Now, depending on your pressure, you could do big drops or tiny drops, depending on um, how hard you're pressing. Now the other thing is if you want it to feel like it's coming down softly, like, you know when there's like a calm snow? You know what I mean? By a calm yeah. snow, it's just snowing and it's really quiet outside. It's literally falling. So you, no wind. you would want this to go just straight down. If you want it to feel like it's in a, a, a flurry, is flurry. that Flurry, yes. Um, you would want these to be angled, so I would do it like this. So I would have these have a strong direction. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you guys choose. Um, watch your spacing, because your brain likes to make patterns, even if you don't mean it to. Like, you'll see that I tend to do things in, like, uh, groups of three. So I'm trying really hard not to do that because I just want to do like one, two, three, one, two, three. It's but funny how the brain finds patterns even if you are also trying your best not to create one. I know, it's amazing. Our brain is so strong. Okay. And then the other thing I did is I did cute little stars because <laughs> I thought it was <laughs> like whimsy. You don't have to do this, but I just did, you know when you do your you go one, two, you do an X and then a line through it. Oh yeah. Just gives it a little extra twinkle. That's just an enormous snowflake. There we go. And I just kind of did them randomly throughout. I didn't do a ton, I just did some here and there. Yep. Okay. Um, now also I just want to call attention to my gingerbread house in this picture is a little bit lighter than what I have here. And that is most likely because I repainted it when I didn't like the details that I did. Um, I like this dark brown that I have, so I'm gonna keep it. But if you really like this really tan color, just do another layer of like white or something on top of it, like mixed with a little bit of brown to lighten it up. But I'm gonna stay with this. Okay, so this is dry enough that I can start doing my details. We're on step three. And I'm gonna use this white paint and I'm gonna add a layer of white snow and I'm gonna do a scalloped edge. So a curve, curve, curve. And then kind of have that come off the roof line a little bit. 
I just realized that I'm resting my brush in my water and I never do that. Mm. Gotta fix that. Sorry. Even when you're painting, you just don't wanna rest, keep your brushes in your water. Cause sometimes you'll be working on a painting for like an hour and you're like, oh, my brush has been sitting. Those bristles have been hitting that bottom of the cup wet for an hour, you know? Not good for those little bristles. Not good for watercolor bristles. Now, acrylic and oil are different. Those bristles are a little bit harder in nature, and they can uh, they can stand up to the harsher conditions hmm. of acrylic. The abuse. The abuse. So I'm just going in with my scallop edge. It's kind of just kind of overcoming the edge a little bit. Make sure you get this bottom part down here, and then you're going to do a straight line on the back side. You, you sounded like you were straight from Missouri when you said scalloped edges. Did I really? Uh-huh. Well, you know. Nailed it. <laughs> I am in Missouri. <laughs> now, um, you can see here, either my brush was too wet or the brown was too wet. I think my brush was too wet because I re brought up that brown. You see that in the uh -huh. snow? So I'm just going to let that dry. And then when that's fully dry, I'll just do another white wash over it. And that's the interesting thing about gouache is it reconstitutes. And that's where sometimes, I mean, it took me a while to get used to gouache because I would just get really frustrated that it kept on reconstituting, especially because I'm used to using a lot of water on my brush from watercolor. And so I'd be like, why? Why are you doing this to me? Then I understood. I had too much water on my brush. Gouache is amazing. Gouache is so fun. Okay, now we gotta do a little chimney snow. There. And then I'm gonna do like a candy cane edge. So I'm gonna start with just doing all white. Like that, and then I'll go in with red and do red stripes. When you repainted your original one, could you have done like almost a khaki ombre yeah using the lower layer yeah yeah that'd be sweet maybe might be too much okay so here is kind of the most that I did with my round six now that I'm gonna do smaller details I would switch to my I'm gonna switch to my two And you can do, I'm gonna do a little windows. Now it's so, I mean like, I feel comfortable drawing and stuff. It is so hard for me to draw square edges. <laughs> like even, I can't even tape my paper evenly. <laughs> I don't know what my deal is. So um, I just wanna say my windows are different sizes and they are not perfectly square. And that's okay. I mean, I'm not in it for perfection. I'm in it for like a whimsy gingerbread house. If you really, really care, you can use a ruler. I do not like using rulers. I struggle with, even when I use a ruler, it comes out crooked and it's so infuriating to me, I just don't use it. Huh. You'll see in one of the tutorials coming up, I'm using a ruler and I'm just gonna embarrass myself, <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> so I'm that's just exciting. saying, that's why I use things to trace instead of like rulers, cause that's easier for me. Anyways. You can use that if you want. Some people are really great about making um, straight lines. I, I, I if do. I have graph paper, I still have to use a ruler. <laughs> you and me both, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Little squares with white gouache here. And then I'm going to do the little window edges. Okay, that one's not too bad. Nice. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> one more. I'm going to try and make it. I'm like so focused right now. Now, again, I thought a gingerbread house would be super fun because they're all decorated differently. I was thinking back to what I was saying earlier about going to my and Ardina's house and doing gingerbread houses, everybody's looked so different from each other. Um, so you don't have to do these decorations that I'm doing. You can totally make this your own design. You can even, I know I just did blue gumdrops in the front here, but 
or I will. You can do multicolored gumdrops. You can introduce other candies. You can do totally different details. Yes. Like, really, de I want you to decorate this gingerbread house as if you were decorating it like in real life and play with the differences of what you can do and what you can make. So mine would 100% have a bite out of it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, and then for the decoration on this roof, what I decided to go to, I tried doing little curly su curly curly cues at curly first. Curly um, And I didn't love how that turned out, so I just decided to go with a straight line of just like straight line. And then I'm gonna leave a space for two red dots Straight line, straight line, and then same thing on the other side. The gingerbread house looks shocked. <laughs> he shook. And I just like to say, like, at any point, you guys can, uh, like, re for any reason, for any reason, for anything, at any point. For anything, for any reason. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you guys can adjust things. Like, what if you let this dry, you went and got a snack, I hope it was something delicious, mm -hmm. and you come back and you're like, gosh, maybe I should change the shape of this thing. You can, like if I wanted to say, um, I kind of want to adjust the roof line here. I want to make it straighter or something, longer. You can, you can do whatever you want. Nice. Maybe maybe you wanna change the, the angle of the house. Maybe you don't like one of the stars that you painted. And you're like, ooh, that, or like a snow got too big. You can just paint over it and start again. You know what I mean? Like, don't be afraid to do that. Gouache gives you that freedom. Now I'm gonna keep messing with this. Okay. So we're still going on with decorating our house. I'm actually, this is dry now, so I'm gonna do another swoop over it. Okay. I'm gonna do little dots at the bottom of my windows. Again, you can do it all around. I mean, this is yours. Okay, now this is the hardest part because it's a circle. Can I use that this? Yes. I'm gonna use Nice. <laughs> I'm going to use this to do my little circle because I can't draw a circle freehand that's even. <laughs> this is the little Yes Paste jar from our art journaling subscription box by Jesse, <laughs> which is an excellent box if you're ever interested in art journaling. We don't sell, sell those individually, so if you don't get that box, <laughs> it might be hard to get the exact thing. Maybe like a quarter or something. Yeah, a quarter would work or a 50 cent piece. Yeah. Or do like. people have 50 cent pieces still? That'd be a huge Somebody's circle. got to. Somebody's got to. Or a lid uh, from a gallon container. Yes. There's many things you can do here. Many circle things. Even this, I'm not going to be able to get it straight. But that's okay. Chessie's going to go to use this. She's going to be like, why is there white gouache all over the bottom <laughs> of this? I'm going to be like, don't worry about it. What do you mean? I don't see anything. Just be like, I paint in watercolor. I don't. I don't know. Gouache. What is gouache? Use, use gouache. <laughs> okay. All right. That's a oh, pretty good nice. circle. Yeah. Now I'm going to do a little window. Nice straight Actually, across nope, level nope. line. I did that wrong. Oh. I need to do yellow first. That's a do not enter sign. <laughs> I decided that the light is going to be on on the top of this, not on the bottom. That was a decision I made. You can follow that or not. So I'm going to paint this yellow. And then when that dries, I'll do the window paint over. Mm. I see. You see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it would be easier just to paint the whole thing and then do white on top than to do white first and then paint yes. in between the chunks. Oh, how lovely gouache is then. Yep. I just thought of a song. I'm going to sing it because I'm not afraid. Okay. 
Isn't gouache lovely? Yes. I was waiting for a second. That's second all I line. Know the words. <laughs> okay. So we got our yellow in. I'm going to do white dots around this window. I just love me some some dots. I just feel like they're the so candy, the art extras. Yes, they're just whimsy. All the above. Okay, kind of looks like a sun. That's cute. Okay, red. We need to use red now for our candy cane de detailing stripe. So I'm just going to do horizontal stripes using my two. I am not doing these super detailed or evenly spaced. I'm kind of just eyeballing it. Again, if you don't like it, you can uh, change it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But wait for it to dry and then paint over it, if you were to change it. You ever seen the movie National Treasure? Yep. I swear I'll tie this back into this painting. Okay, I can't wait. It would have been great to have known and in advance done a box in honor of National Treasure. Because when you were doing the dots around the circle... And you got halfway around, I was like, oh man, this could be like a secret meaning painting. <laughs> and I was like, what if we did a national, and then on our national treasure <laughs> box? It's like each painting has a different meaning. And if you put it together, you win a prize. I love that idea. We're going to do it. Okay, this one I did two dots because there was room. This one I just did one dot because that's all the room I had for. And I'm fine with that because this is my wonky gingerbread house. And nice. it could be whatever I want. Now I'm going to paint my red door so my white paint is dry enough that I can just paint right on top. Now you might be asking, well, Sarah, if gouache is opaque, then um, why did you need to put white underneath? And that's a good point. Um, I guess I knew, I guess it depends on the space, the amount of um, space that you're taking up. For example, the white dots. The red dots on this are just tiny, and so they're they're easier to read, right? Because they're just little dots. But I knew this door, I would need to like smear it and spread it around, and I just thought like, I'm like I want this to be vibrant and red. I don't want brown to be mixed in there with it at all. And usually with gouache, when you're doing a larger space, it's a little bit harder not to use water to like spread it. So does that? Do you get what I'm saying? Like I wanted. I wanted to set myself up for success without doing a bunch of layers and I felt like that if I left it brown and did red on top it would pick up some of the brown and that would make it muddy and then I would have to wait for it to dry and do another red and I just thought like let's just make it easier. Yeah. To make it really easier you could have just cut out the door. I guess it depends on what your version of easy is though, right? That would have been fun. Yeah, you could have just left a space. Yeah. Um, and the other thing too is just like if you want to add... I mean, this is why I love gouache, right? Where it's just like, let's say I want to add um, like a lighter texture. Like you see, I have a little bit more brush texture on this because I repainted it. Mm -hmm. Like you can do that on yours. Huh. And um, like you can just add a little bit here and there. That's nice. If you want to add some like brush work. You can have it be smooth and leave it, or if you want a little bit of, of brush work or something, add that to the game. You can make the chimney bricks. Yeah, you can do, there's just. So many options. There's so many options, and I just. So possibilities. I love it. Isn't gouache love? <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm just giving you guys permission to play showing you what I did. I liked that even though this wasn't my intention because I was just painting over a part I didn't like, I like that there's like brush strokes and textures and you know different stuff in there and so I'm going to bring that back. 
again. You don't have to, right? This is your painting. Okay. Uh, now let's do the gumdrops. I'm going to mix white, mostly white, and a tiny bit of blue to get a light blue. But you can do multicolored gumdrops. And they're just like half circles. You can even continue the gumdrops on if you want it to like be a full fence that goes out of frame. Like, really? There's so many options. I just love these colors too, as you can tell by the colors in this box, like the you know, like a, like the vintage blue, like robin egg blue and red and white and blush. I just, I love those colors. Okay. And while I'm going to give my house a little bit, a second to dry, I'm going to do the little footprints. So I'm actually going to just reconstitute the blush color that I have left over from my background and just do little marks. There's a footprint, there's one, and I'm gonna have it kind of go angled off to the side. They get a little bit. I didn't even see those. You didn't see those? No. Oh. So subtle. Just soft little guys. Okay, now I am going to just do my last minute detailing. I still gotta do my window pane, my door, and my chimney. And then I think we're good. So um, I'm just going to do a line. Oh, that had too much water on it. Okay, when you have too much water on your brush, it's just going to drop water on your area. And I'm just going to pick it up with a paper towel. Mm. That's it. And then I'm going to hit my paintbrush on my paper towel to absorb the extra water. And then I'm just going to pick up the paint and start again. Line dot dot line dot dot line dot dot line okay and I'm going to do a line on my chimney where I'm just kind of like doing the edges of it kind of like I did on the roof line. Mm. Nice. There. Now we got to do our window pane. That's pretty dry. And this is the other nice thing about gouache that I like is it, it dries fairly quickly so I can layer faster where like that's not oil at all. Oil takes like so long to dry that I actually, whenever I paint oil, I'm like trying to reteach myself because um, it just kind of turns into a muddy mess because I just layer, layer, layer when it's not dry yet. Okay, there's my little window. Nice. And, uh, oh, let's do little dots on my you know how they have like sugar texture, little, mm -hmm. I'm doing little dots on my Those little gum drops. Gum drops and I, we have a love-hate relationship. Yeah. Because I love to eat them, but they always hurt my teeth. I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to lie, like, chewy candy has never been my, like, gum drops and Laffy Taffies and things like that. They're just not my favorite kind of candy. I'm more of a chocolate, chocolate kind of candy yeah. person. I like red vines and Twizzlers. Nope, not interested. <laughs> hmm. Sorry, Kenan. No, it's fine. We've already learned that we have very different palettes, me and you. Yes, that's true. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a couple more snowdrops that are smaller. 
And if you want to use like, I know that um, there's like a toothbrush technique where you can like dip it and then flick it and it's going to do a lot of tiny little drops. Um, that would work. Oh, and then I got to do my white lines on my door. And then that's the last thing. So I kind of just did, you know, when wood, you know, like the space between like a wood texture, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, between each piece of wood? Yeah. Yeah. Or it's prison door. Oh, <laughs> you're going to like Christmas or you're going to stay here. You have to eat your way out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, done. There'd be so many more free people. You eat your way out of gingerbread prison. And I'm just going to do a little doorknob. I don't think I have a doorknob in my painting, so I'm putting one in now. Okay, that's uh, that's it, you guys. That's our... That's our gingerbread house. So I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. I really hope you take this idea and just run. You can do a whole little gingerbread town. You can do family. I just, I'm so excited to see what you guys can do because you are an extremely creative bunch. And I'm so grateful that you take the time to paint with me every week and try something new. So I appreciate that. Um, if you are on Instagram, tag us at Let's Go Make Art. If you are on Facebook, join our watercolor group. Let's make our watercolor. Um, that way you guys can see what we're doing. And I'm going to remove the tape mm -hmm. really quick. Wow. Whoa, that was quick. <laughs> I'm doing it way quicker than I usually do because I'm feeling edgy today. Dang, that looks good. Got a nice, well, this one won't really do much because the bottom of the paper is white. Whoa, but look still. at that line. <laughs> still. <laughs> okay there we go thank you guys if you need any of this stuff you, uh, supplies you can find it at letsmakeart.com i'll see you guys later thanks bye